Hello, everybody. My name is Francesco Di Giacomo. I'm a, a PhD student from the University of Venice uh, doing a joint PhD with the University of Tilburg in the Netherlands. Uh, so in this presentation, I will talk about uh, Meta Casanova, which is a meta compiler based on uh, operational semantic, which uh, was created to ease the development of uh, Casanova, which is uh, a domain-specific language for uh, game development. Uh, so in this presentation, I will uh, give an overview on domain-specific la languages. Uh, I will uh, introduce uh, Meta Casanova in his uh, first version and show you uh, an example of use. Uh, then I will show you um, a language extension of Meta Casanova with functors. Uh, and uh, I will show you an example of use also of uh, functors uh, and records. And then uh, we I will uh, show you the results uh, of this work. Uh, so. Uh, what are the advantages of domain-specific languages? Uh, of course, they provide uh, abstractions that are closer to our problem domains. Uh, in the particular case of game development, uh, uh, we always deal with uh, problematics such as uh, concurrency uh, and uh, um, basically updating uh, uh, a lot of events at the same time. Uh, in this context, uh, it's not feasible to use uh, uh, threads. Uh, so there are multi-threaded game engines, but uh, actually they don't spawn a thread for each entity in the game that you have to update. Uh, so what uh, was done in uh, Casanova was to create uh, a system of state machines that basically uh, allow us to simulate the behavior of a multi-threaded environment. And the language offers uh, abstractions such as uh, uh, wait statements that allow you to uh, stop until a condition or a, a timer uh, has elapsed, and even more complex uh, parallel const constructs. Uh, of course, this uh, allows us to speed up the development of, uh, in our case, uh, a game, uh, in, uh, in the general case of, uh, 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 of other problems, uh, they in general offer abstractions that uh, allow, uh, allows to, to speed up the, the development process. Uh, so there are two possible paths. Uh, either we uh, embed uh, the DSL in a host language, or we can write a compiler or an interpreter for it. Uh, of course, uh, both solutions have advantages and disadvantages. So the advantage of uh, embedding is that uh, we can reuse the host language infrastructure. And uh, if I give the domain-specific language to uh, someone which is familiar with the host language, he only needs to uh, uh, learn about the new abstractions, but uh, it is more familiar with, uh, with the language itself. Uh, and uh, the, the problem is that the syntax will be bound to uh, the, the host language and domain-specific optimizations uh, are not easy to implement. Uh, on the other hand, if we use uh, a compilation approach or interpretation, uh, then we have more flexibility uh, for the syntax we can generate good error reporting, uh, we can perform uh, specific optimizations. Uh, th uh, unfortunately, uh, this leads to longer development time and uh, usually develop developing a compiler uh, basically uh, generates a recursive pattern in the process of the development itself. Uh, now we will see uh, why. Uh, so basically, when uh, we build a compiler, uh, usually we give a formalization uh, of the grammar, the type system, and the semantics. Uh, then we have to build uh, a syntactical analyzer, uh, a type checker, and we have to implement the semantics of the language in uh, a target language. Uh, this can be assembly or uh, any programming language. Uh, uh, for example, Casanova generates uh, .NET, and also Meta Casanova so it generates a C sharp that is then co compiled with a .NET compiler. Uh, 
So uh, step one and two uh, are sort uh, are the creative part of this work. So when you design a new language, you think about its syntax and uh, uh, type system and semantics. Uh, step three, so the uh, syntax analyzer can be uh, um, achieved by using a lexer or parser generator. Uh, step, step four usually uh, takes the formal definition uh, of the type system and tries to implement it into the abstractions of uh, the programming language that we are using to build the compiler itself. And the same is for step five. So we are trying to uh, implement the, the semantics of the language into the abstractions provided by the language that we choose to use for the compiler. Uh, the point is that step four and five uh, basically are the same, uh, independently of the language that we are building the compiler with, uh, for, sorry. Uh, because uh, what we are doing is that we take some kind of formalization and we try to map it into the abstractions of the language that we are using for the implementation of the compiler. So, uh, mm, yeah, uh, basically we have some side effect when we are doing this because we are mimicking the behavior of this uh, formal definition, uh, but uh, basically the, then we have to translate it into something that is very distant from the original formulation. So uh, basically uh, the, the the clean, uh, the clean way of representing the, the, the type system, for example, with the form of semantics is lost uh, in this process. Uh, for example, if we use inference rules, so we use operational semantics, that we, are, we have to re-implement the behavior of uh, inference rules into uh, our uh, host language every time that we write a new compiler. So uh, the question is, can we capture this pattern somehow? And the answer is uh, uh, yes. Uh, so what we did is, uh, to, is to build a meta compiler to, to do this, uh, which is based on, uh, in our case, on uh, uh, operational semantics and the type system. Uh, so the, the first qu uh, research question that we tried to answer was, uh, what is the benefit in terms of development speed that this uh, brings to us. Uh, and what is the trade-off to pay in introducing the abstraction layer of a meta compiler? And the second one uh, actually uh, in some way spoils the answer of the first research question because uh, basically uh, during this process uh, we noticed that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the development time uh, is quite shorter with the uh, meta compiler, but the uh, meta compiler introduces a lot of overhead uh, and the performance decays. And so we were trying to investigate what can be done to improve uh, the performance uh, when using such meta compiler. So in general, meta compilers are software that take uh, a definition of a language into a meta language, a program written in that language, and they output uh, executable code. Uh, in our case, uh, we express the, the, the language definition in terms of rules uh, in uh, operational semantics or into a type system, uh, and then we give uh, a meta representation of the program for that language and we output uh, C-sharp code that can be later compiled uh, uh, by, with the .NET compiler. Uh, what is the structure of a Casanova program? We have metadata, metadata structures declarations that basically uh, uh, are a way to represent the abstractions of a language, for example, an if then else, a while loop, and so on. And then we have function declarations that are used uh, to uh, select what rule we, have, we want to use to process something. Uh, then we also allow subtyping. So uh, basically uh, we could say that uh, an atomic value in the language can be used also for an expression. So where we expect uh, an expression type. And then we have finally rules. 
which are actually what allows, uh, allows us to uh, evaluate the meta program. Uh, it is also uh, possible to embed types uh, and methods from an external language. Uh, uh, for now, only C sharp, but in future, we plan to support more. Uh, so, this is the example of uh, a rule in Meta Casanova. We have a set of premises that are above the fraction line. Uh, they can be uh, bindings, uh, uh, clauses that are predicates that evaluate to either true or false. And then we have function calls. And then we have a conclusion which contains a function call and of course gives a result on the right side if uh, all the premises succeed to, uh, to generate a, a result. So these are uh, the, form, uh, the formalization rules to uh, uh, formalize the rule evaluation into Meta Casanova. So uh, in the first premise, uh, we uh, use this symbol to say that we evaluate uh, a certain rule R through uh, a function, uh, sorry, a certain function F through a rule R. So the first uh, uh, of these rules tells us uh, when we have, basically when we automatically succeed into evaluate a rule. The first one is an axiom. When we don't have any close or any function called, so basically we have no premises, then we have an axiom, and we always succeed into generating a result. Uh, the second one uh, instead uh, defines how we succeed when we have some premises. So we succeed into evaluating a rule when for each close, uh, we, uh, its evaluation leads to a true value, and for each function, we are able to find a, a rule in the program that succeeds that is able to uh, emit a result. If this happens, then the, the rule itself succeeds. Uh, rule 3a and b uh, define when the rule fails. So a rule fails when there is a clause that evaluates to false, or when for each rule in the program, we fail to evaluate a function call in a premise. In these two cases, we don't, uh, the rule fails the execution, basically. So uh, now I will show you uh, an example in Meta Casanova uh, of uh, how we can define uh, two control structures, the if then else and while loop uh, with variable scoping. So basically uh, to do this for brevity, we assume that we have a way to encode uh, the metadata for the atomic values of the language and that we have a function that is able to evaluate uh, uh, expressions. So somewhere in the program we have uh, evaluation rules to uh, compute the result of ex expressions. So the memory is represented as a metadata structure encapsulating a dictionary from .NET. Uh, this is done for uh, performance reasons, but uh, actually uh, we could also use uh, a list of pairs where each pair is made by an ID and a value. Uh, this leads, of course, to worse performance, but uh, it is cleaner because it's, uh, it will be entirely expressed into the meta language. While here we are using an external data structure as support. Uh, then uh, we define, for example, a data structure for uh, a list of symbol tables because we want to uh, uh, allow scoping. So we need to have a symbol table for each uh, nesting level uh, of, the, of the program. Uh, then, this is how we define if then else. We can define two keywords. Uh, Casanova forces you to give a type to each data structure. So we have to say that the type of the keyword then is then uh, and else the same because then we can use it into the uh, data, the metadata definition for the if. Okay? Uh, these are only syntactical. It's only syntactical sugar, it has no function. So we could also skip them, but then the code is less readable. And the same for while do. And then we define a function eval that takes uh, a list of, uh, of symbol tables, because again, we want to support local scoping. Uh, uh, and then uh, a statement and uh, generates uh, a result. Oh, sorry. So, uh, what happens when we want to evaluate an if? We have two rules. Uh, 
uh, basically, uh, we want to, uh, to check if the condition is true or false. But first of all, uh, note that in the conclusion, we have pattern matching. So this rule triggers only when we give an imp as input a statement which has the structure of an if-then-else. If anything else is given, this, auto this rule automatically fails, basically. So it's skipped. Uh, so uh, the first one defines what happens when the condition is true. Uh, we create an empty dictionary, which is used for the scope of the if then uh, of the uh, then in this case. We push this new uh, symbol table into the list. Then we eval uh, evaluate the then block, and then we generate, uh, uh, we output as a result, uh, a new list of tables. Uh, in this case, we uh, also discard the head, which is the local scoping of the DEM block, because at this point, we are done. So we throw away all the local variables defined into the DEM. Uh, the same uh, for the false, except that we do that for the else block. But the logic is the same. For the while do, we use the same uh, putter, uh, same uh, uh, way of pattern matching the, the input of the function, but uh, when the the, while, uh, the condition of the while is false, it's easier because we simply skip uh, the statement uh, completely and we return the symbol tables. Uh, and the true is uh, more complex, so basically we have again to push the, the an empty table for the local uh, uh, scope. Uh, but then we also have to reevaluate re the while completely after uh, popping the, lo the, the local scope. So basically, first uh, we evaluate the, uh, the loop block, and then we pop the local scope and we reevaluate re everything. Uh, okay, so what is the advantage of this? The advantage is that the code is quite uh, shorter. I will show you at the end of the presentation uh, the quantitative measure, by five minutes, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, the semantics is very similar to the formal definition of uh, the operational semantics. It's not identical, but it's very close. Uh, the problem that we notice is that we have a low performance uh, due to the memory representations, and the language itself exhibits uh, behavior of uh, a dynamic language because uh, all the typing of the language, even if we assume it's statically uh, typed, will be generated as inference rules, and then they are, those rules are run uh, at runtime. So even if we, in this way, we don't have a way of, rep of uh, defining a statically typed language. Even if we do so, it doesn't behave as such. Uh, so what is the problem? The problem is that uh, the, uh, basically the meta type system of Meta Casanova is uh, completely unaware of the type system of the language that we are implement, uh, implementing. So what we are trying to do to improve this uh, drawback is to uh, find a way to embed the type system of uh, the language that we are implemented into the meta type system. And this was done by extending meta Casanova uh, with uh, functors so, and modules. So modules are uh, basically sub-programs. Uh, it's like an interface in an object-oriented language. And fun functors are uh, functions that process types instead of values. So what happens is uh, now I will uh, quickly show you how to define uh, a record uh, into, with this model. Uh, also because a record can then be uh, used also as uh, a symbol table. So basically we have a, a module that defines a record. Inside this module there is a single functor that returns the type of the record. The type of the record is kind, which means anything. So of course, it can be uh, anything we want. So we have no restriction. Uh, so a record will be uh, represented as a, a sequence of pairs where the base case is the empty record and then we have a record field which has uh, a field name as a string, uh, a kind because it can have any type, and then is followed by the rest of the record representation. 
Uh, the empty record contains a constructor that returns unit, so empty or whatever you want, and the record type is unit because it's the only thing that is contained in, the, in an empty record. Uh, a field uh, uh, is uh, another instantiation of the record module, but this time we build uh, a constructor that accepts the type of the current field and then also the rest of the record. And how do we do that? We call a functor called the record type on the, ne on the next uh, le uh, record. Uh, record type returns a tuple, which is the type of the current field and the type of the rest of the representation. Uh, so this is how you could create uh, uh, um, the type of a physical body record. So a physical body has the speed of velocity represented as a bidimensional vector. Uh, so basically, we instantiate an empty re uh, record module, then a velocity record module, and then a position that is followed by a velocity module, and uh, the velocity is followed by uh, an empty record. And then we can, uh, this will generate at compile time these two modules. So all the functors are evaluated at compile time. So basically, this inlines the follow, uh, the, the, uh, can, is able to inline the follow representation. So when I call the constructor with two uh, vectors, in this case, uh, zero velocity and zero position, it will inline this tuple, basically, in the code. Uh, the getter is uh, also a module uh, which uh, uh, is able to return the type of the uh, field that we want to get, and it generates a function get that is able to retrieve the value. Uh, very quickly, this uh, has uh, two cases. Uh, the current field that we are reading is the one that we want to get, so we generate a function that returns the head of the tuple. Otherwise, we have to generate another module that eventually will be able to retrieve uh, the, the field. So we generate a cascade of gets, basically. Uh, so uh, this was the result of the implementation of uh, Casanova into the first version of Meta Casanova. As you can see, uh, we have uh, the code that is five times shorter, almost. Uh, although the performance are not uh, as good. So uh, for uh, C++, which is a small imperative language that we re-implemented, and uh, I showed a part of it uh, earlier, it's, uh, we have a 50 times slower performance. And uh, Casanova, uh, the implementation of Casanova is three times slower than Python on average. Uh, while we, uh, we try to uh, re-evaluate uh, this performance with records, and we have a speed up, a speed up of uh, almost uh, 11 times compared with uh, the implementation that uses the dictionary. So in this way, we are able to uh, improve by 11 times the performance of the older version of Meta Casanova. And this is a chart uh, with uh, the representation of the data that we so uh, the, uh, the conclusion is that uh, we have code reduction. Uh, we can uh, uh, achieve static typing and a perform better performance with uh, records. Uh, so in this way, we can fast prototype a new language. Uh, we have some problems. So uh, we don't have a pretty printer or uh, actually uh, a way to define a, a good syntax for the program. So the program must be specified in terms of the meta language itself for now, uh, and uh, the performance is worse than the hard-coded compiler in, uh, in the case of Casanova. So uh, the, method, the compiler of Casanova has a performance uh, in the order of those of C-sharp, and this is way uh, slower. Uh, so future work is extending uh, Casanova with the networking primitives using functors. Uh, and then uh, we are working on the uh, uh, web-based meta interpreter for uh, uh, learning uh, programming, so for, for teaching and learning programming. Thanks for the attention.